Hi, Year 5 and 6. Um, I hope you're all well. Thank you for um, emailing in and for watching the videos and for all of you that are working so hard at home. We are so, so proud of you. If you haven't yet, watch the Friday Feedback Show because your work might be on it. Um, and if your work wasn't in it last week, keep sending your work in this week and um, we'll be doing the same again and having a look over your fantastic work. Okay, so we are halfway through week two of your English learning. So you are really familiar with instruction text now. You should have read, I've sent you about four. Um, so you should have read those, be really familiar with them and have lots of ideas for your own instructions and have planned those. So before you go any further, I'd like us to have a look at what those instructions what yours should look like okay um so i'm gonna have a look at a powerpoint okay um so we're going to have a look at the actual writing of your instructions now that you know instructions really well you know their language features let's have a look at what you're doing next so this is your main writing part Okay, so um, you should have planned your instructions and on the screen you can see two examples of planning that I've been sent today. Okay, so we have got a set of planning for making a cup of tea, which is really clear. You can see they've thought about the tips that I've given them, um, thinking about what they're going to include in each section. And then we've got another one for how to make a Tudor house which is fantastic. It's something that you've all done. Okay, so a really good idea, something really nice for you to write instructions about. Okay, so hopefully today you've done something similar to that. You've got down your ideas for planning your own instructions. Okay, so a couple of things to remember before you start writing. So your structure, you're going to have an introduction, the list of equipment, the method, and then some kind of final note at the end. Your language, we're really focusing on those four language features that you found in the instructions and that you've had a go at writing as well. So in your instructions I'd really like you to include expanded noun phrases, adverbial phrases, imperative verbs, relative clauses and subordinate clauses. Okay and if you need any help on any of those features do just email and we'll steer you in the right direction. Okay, so um, I'm going to do a model for making a pizza because that is something new that I have done this week. Um, and I put that video up on YouTube as well. So if you want to see me being a bit silly, having a go at making a pizza and actually doing quite a good job, if I say so myself, <laughs> then head over and have a look at the video on YouTube. Okay, so um, let's get to insert text box. Okay, so um, the first thing I need is a title. So I'm going to give it a how to title. So let's go for how to make a delicious, comma, Italian style pizza. Oh. Got Italian wrong. There we go. Bit of spell check. My class always likes to point out when I've got a spelling mistake. So let's get that right. Okay, and I'll underline that because that is my title. Okay, and then my introduction. So I'm going to start off. I want to be quite engaging. So I'm going to start off with a couple of questions. So I'm going to ask, are you fed up of Fed up with actually disappointing shop bought pizzas. That's my first question. And then maybe something slightly different. Are you looking for a fun? I think I'll put in brackets and messy because if you see my video, it was quite messy and messy way to spend an hour. 
Okay, so I've started with those two rhetorical questions to try and pull my audience in, my reader in, and get them really engaged. Well, look no further, exclamation mark. And already you can see I've got a real range of punctuation. I've got my commas there between my adjectives, disappointing and shot bought. I've got two question marks and two exclamation marks and a pair of brackets. Okay, so I'm putting in all that lovely year five and six punctuation. Okay, um, I think I'll go for starting my next sentence with a subordinate conjunction if. So I'm going to use a subordinate clause next. So if you follow these simple instructions, comma to separate my subordinate clause you can make your very own delicious pizza that tastes or what can i say about it pizza what's wrong with me pizza <laughs> that tastes Oh, let's go for like it's straight from Italy. Oh, like a slice of Italy itself. That's nice. Like a slice of Italy itself. I miss having your guys' ideas to put into these model texts. I tell you, it's much easier with you, your young young brains. Okay. Um, so what are you waiting for? Hmm, what do you need to do? So you need to get searching through the cupboards. What are you waiting for? Get searching through your cupboards. What did I do? Oh, I had to clean everything down. Get searching through your cupboards. Start cleaning down your surfaces and in no time at all you'll have a oh, I've used delicious a few times actually you'll have an authentic pizza that will keep you full for hours and the pizza really did keep me full for hours if you see the end of the video I am stuffed Okay, and I think I'm happy with that for my introduction. So as you can see, it's a nice, neaty introduction. Okay, um, lots of questions, lots of excitement, lots of come on, let's get let going, let's get started on these instructions. Um, um, I am also just going to have a look with you today at the next section. So that's my what you need section, I'm going to call it. You could put the title um, ingredients or equipment. I've gone for what you need with my colon there. So I'm going to use some bullet points here to have my bullet pointed list. So this is a really great opportunity to use some expanded noun phrases to give really specific detail about the things that I need. So I'm going to list my my ingredients making sure i give lots of detail about them so i know what i used i had 500 grams oh i don't need that underlined I'm sure one of you would have pointed that out 500 grams of strong white flour and i think i'll put in brackets plus a little extra for dusting okay my next thing so it was 10 grams of fast acting, using that hyphen there to join those words, fast acting dried yeast. However, I didn't actually have that. So I'm going to say in brackets, or baking powder works too, because that's what I used. Um, what else did I have in my dough? So I used several pinches of salt um, and I had, oh, I had a bit of olive oil. How can I make that interesting? 
Hmm. Let's say a dash of olive oil. That's quite nice, isn't it? A dash of. Okay, and then for my toppings, so I used one 400 gram can of plum tomatoes. Um, oh, I like pepper in everything, so I put in mine, you don't have to, but I put in mine a level teaspoon of pepper. Um, a small bunch of basil leaves, let's say fresh basil leaves to add a bit of um, more detail about the of fresh basil leaves. And my last thing, 200 grams of, oh, of a cheese of your choice. Okay, and as you can see, loads and loads of really specific detail there, lots of really great specific um, expanded noun phrases. Okay, so um, your aim for today is to have about that much written of your text. So you're looking for your introduction and then your list of ingredients thinking about the structure, thinking about those language choices that you're making um, and trying to make your work at that year five and six standard. OK, um, good luck. I'll do another video tomorrow just to show you how I finish my text. Um, looking forward to seeing what you come up with. OK, take care. Goodbye.